Advanced Math, Lesson 20, Two Special Triangles. Uh, another way to say this would just be call, to call them reference triangles. Um, the two special triangles are referring to are these triangles. Uh, and these are called reference triangles because these are two actual right triangles that we use in trigonometry a lot to reference uh, sines, cosines, and tangents of 45 degree angles, 30 degree angles, and 60 degree angles. Uh, so starting with the first reference triangle, this one is called a 45, 45, 90, and they're both named for the degrees within them. So this is a 45, 45, 90 uh, degree reference triangle. Uh, it's an isosceles triangle. We see that the length of each side is 1, and the hypotenuse has a length of square root of 2. Uh, the second reference triangle is called the 30, 60, 90, because it has sides of 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. The short leg is always going to be 1, the long leg will be the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse will be 2. You need to memorize these triangles, and we got to know how to construct them. Uh, so the easiest way to construct a 45-45-90 is to draw an isosceles triangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, make the equal sides 1, and then the hypotenuse is square root 2, then fill in the 45 and the 45. That one's easier to construct than the 30-60-90. 30-60-90 can get a little confusing, and I use logic to help me construct it. Um, so the 30, 60, 90, I usually start by drawing uh, a scalene right triangle no, you know, with no sides equal. Uh, from there, I draw in the degrees. The small angle is always going to be 30. The big angle is always going to be 60. Uh, and then I remember the smallest angle gives me the smallest number, which is 1. From there, uh, I have to remember that 2 is actually bigger than the square root of 3 because the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So square root of 3 is smaller than 2. So the next largest leg, or the, the long leg, is going to be square root of 3. And then the longest side, the hypotenuse, will be 2. So these are our two reference triangles. Now, how we're going to use them is going to be to solve trigonometric problems without the use of a, a calculator while using sine and cosine. Uh, so an, an example they give, uh, they would tell us to um, evaluate the tangent of 30 degrees. So they would tell, the instructions would say, um, you know, I'll show you. If you look at example 20.1 in your book, that's on page 146, they say draw the necessary reference triangle and evaluate the tangent of 30 degrees. Well, um, if we're doing the tangent of 30 degrees, then we know which reference triangle we're going to need. We are going to need the 30, 60, 90. So to do the tangent of 30 degrees, I'm going to use my SOHCAHTOA rhyme. I remember that tangent, or TOA, is equal to the tangent of theta, uh, and that equals the opposite over the adjacent side. So now I look at my reference triangle that I just drew in my head from memory, and I look at the angle 30 degrees. The opposite side of 30 degrees is 1, so I'm going to fill that in here. I put the opposite. The adjacent side of 30 degrees is going to be the square root of 3, so that becomes root 3. So the tangent of 30 degrees is going to equal 1 over square root of 3. Now the only problem is we can't have a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize this. Rationalize it by multiplying uh, by a value of 1 written with square root of 3. The denominator now becomes 3, and the numerator becomes square root of 3. So the tangent of 30 degrees is going to be root 3 over 3, and that's the correct answer. Now, that's an easy problem. Uh, they do uh, a little bit harder ones, and they will tell you to evaluate things like 4 times the square root of 3 times the cosine of 60 degrees. So what this requires us to do is find the cosine of 60 degrees, then multiply it by 4 square root of 3. I'll go ahead and fold my paper here so we can see our reference triangle. So, to find the cosine of 60 degrees, we draw our 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. We remember that cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, and then we go to the 60 degree angle. The 60 degree angle has an adjacent side of 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. So the cosine of 60 is going to equal 1 over 2, or 1 half. Now, we have 4 root 3 times the cosine of 60. So all we're going to do is we're going to substitute 1 half for cosine of 60. So now our problem becomes 4 root 3 times 1 half. Now to multiply a, uh, a whole number times a fraction, we just put this over 1. Uh, we multiply, we get 4 root 3 over 2. 
and then we can cancel the four and the two. If four becomes two, two becomes one. So our final answer becomes two root three uh, because my denominator is one, so I don't need to put that in there. So four root three times cosine of 60 gives us two root three. Uh, this is a pretty short lesson, so I'll go ahead and do one more example. Uh, they want us to ex find the answer to 10 times the square root of 5 times the tangent of 45 degrees. So for that, we're going to use our 45, 45, 90 reference triangle. So 1, 1, root 2, tangent of 45 is going to be opposite over the adjacent. So if I look at 45 degree angle, the opposite side is going to be 1, the adjacent side is going to be 1. So the tangent of 45 is going to equal 1 over 1, or just 1. So 1 times 10 times the square root of 5 uh, is just 10 root 5. Wait, hold on. Pause. I just realized I misread the problem. Hold on. Okay. Um, man, that's, that's messed up. Why would they write it that way? Okay. So let me let you see what I just saw. Uh, they wrote it as 10 divided by square root 5. I read it quickly, and I did not see the divided by symbol. So watch out for this on your homework. Uh, so it's actually 10 divided by root 5 times the tangent of 45, which is equal to 1. So uh, I actually have 10 over root 5 times 1. That's just going to equal 10 over root 5. From here, we have to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply it by root 5 over root 5. Uh, and then we get 10 root 5 over 5. Uh, running out of room here. Uh, the 5 and the 10 can cancel into 2 over 1. So the final answer just becomes 2 times square root of 5. I thought that problem looked too easy. Okay, so those are reference triangles. That's how you use them. Um, you can just go ahead and start out by copying these on a sheet of paper and using them on your homework. Uh, but then eventually you've got to start trying to attempt your problems without looking at them immediately or by drawing them from memory. Uh, so definitely learn your reference triangles. It's something that you need to know. It, it really helps as you go into further math. Uh, and that's it there. That, that's all there is for lesson 20.